It's been six years since developer Remedy's last full game, the truly excellent Alan Wake. So let's shatter time with Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Remember this moment. Break is a choice consequence narrative thriller and a third person shooter. Get ready for a whirlwind time bending experience with a stellar cast. You begin as Jack Joyce, played by X-Men's Sean Ashmore, who is invited to help with the final stages of a time travel experiment by your old friend Paul Serene, played by Game of Thrones' Aidan Gillen. In the flesh. The esteemed Mr. Paul Serene. And since when do time travel experiments ever go right? <laughs> Within minutes, shit hits the fan, and an accident leaves you imbued with time-controlled powers, while the universe is put on an apocalyptic crash course with the end of time itself. Yes. Now, being a game that's so focused on story with plenty of spoilers, I think it's best that we don't say too much about the plot itself. But what a cast, though, Barjo. Oh, yeah. Two actors from The Wire popped up in the first hour, and I was in. Top-tier stuff. <laughs> As you know, Jack's level of interference led to unexpected complications. It's a great time travel story, and it plays with all of those tropes beautifully. And I think if Looper and Doctor Who have taught us anything about time travel storylines, is that they're often messy and confusing and a bit stupid. But I didn't find any plot holes in this. It's super impressive. Yeah, it's all handled really cleverly. And as soon as you find yourself kind of asking, well, why don't they just do that? Some character seems to come along and ask the same question, and then someone else will explain why they can't. The past has already happened. We can't change it. But my way, we don't have to. And I thought Aidan Gillen especially played his role perfectly. You know what this means? You don't know for sure. I'm a dead man! You let this happen! One of this game's big features is that they've incorporated a whole TV show into the game. At the end of each act, you're treated to a live-action half-hour episode of Quantum Break, the TV show. Now, Remedy did a great job with the whole episodic TV feel of Alan Wake, but generally, I don't like 25-minute cutscenes spliced into my games. Yeah, and long cutscenes can often lose me at the best of times, but I actually think this worked quite well. And maybe it's just the fact that I knew I could put the controller down and just sit back and enjoy some story for a bit. Liam, this isn't what it looks like. As opposed to more traditional cutscenes where I'm just waiting to get back into the action, or worse, I think I can put the controller down and go get a snack, and then there's a quick time event, and I'm like, ah! Yeah, it won me over pretty quickly, too. And it's not as intrusive as I thought it would be. There's only four episodes in a 10 hour or so experience, so, you know, they paced it out well. Yeah, plus the show tackles events from the other perspective, the Monarch Corporation, which helps to flesh out the villains and the story in a way that other games tend to struggle with. Mm. Also, before each episode starts, you switch over to play as Paul for a few minutes and get to make a decision on how the story plays out in what are called junction moments. Initialize a PR campaign. I want to stay. And that violence was because of Jack Joyce. And this will affect what happens in both the show and the game. The decisions do feel quite significant, but I retried the first junction and I couldn't really see how much that other option affected the TV show itself. And maybe it does a lot more further down the line, but I think to really see that, we'd have to do full two playthroughs, put them side by side and just analyze everything. But <laughs> I mean, you can skip them if you really want to. And I do think the gameplay story itself would hold up enough without them. The show itself too is quite B-grade, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but they've clearly spent a bit of money on it. There are enough gunfights, fisticuffs, and car chases to spice things up. The acting is mostly good, but there is some cringe here and there. The, what's the 411? What the hell's going on out there? The <laughs> 411. Yeah, the 411. <laughs> uh, everything's, everything's fine. Everything's fine? Everything's fine. Despite having an A-list cast, most of the big-name actors have pretty small roles on the show. Yeah, also they seem to struggle to go even two minutes without shoving some Microsoft product in shot. 114 Lafayette. And, and our friends at WZWY. <laughs> wow. It's distracting, and it makes the world less believable with everyone using Windows phones, because we all know that no one uses Windows phones. Let's talk about the gameplay. I was quite surprised to find that this has some of the best third-person action I have ever seen. You've got a whole arsenal of time manipulation powers to go along with your guns. Things like a time dash, 
and a time shield, but my favourite was the time stop. This puts enemies into a bubble of time, which lets you overload them with bullets that smash into them all at once. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular, and the time distortion effects are incredible to watch in motion. One thing I didn't like at first, though, is that there's no blind fire from cover, and also you can't just shoot from the hip, you have to aim first. I'm just so used to third-person games letting me do all that. But I can see how that might make you rely too much on hiding in cover, and this is all about getting out there and going crazy with your time powers. Yeah, it does make you feel pretty overpowered, but in a good way. But you can't take many hits, so you do have to use your powers cleverly. Yeah, plus, to keep you in check, they do ramp things up and throw tougher enemies at you, such as guys that are immune to certain powers or just really heavily armoured guys with weak spots on their back. But even so, not much can stand in your way. Yeah, my only real criticism of the combat is that I just wanted more of it. There isn't enough. <laughs> A lot of the game is mostly wandering about and soaking up story or solving some light environmental puzzles, which are good. But so is the action, and I wanted a little bit more of that. Yeah, there's a lot of story to soak up, isn't there? The world is full of extra documents and emails and things to snoop through to flesh out the story. A lot of it was a bit TLDR, but I'm glad they put in that extra effort for people who really want to dive deep into the story, like me. We should mention a few technical things. Uh, firstly, if you're playing on PC, you'll be streaming the TV show, which means you need an internet connection. But if you're playing on console, you can download it. Also, apparently this game is running at 720p and it looks amazing. I was just so impressed with the motion capture and the detail. It feels like you're walking around a movie interacting with the actors. Shoving a gun in my face? Yes, a gun. The universal symbol for shut the up and listen to me. Sound logic is out of You. I mean, I say if lower resolutions mean that they can cram in as many effects and graphics as this, more developers should just go for it. But we should wrap this up, Bajo. What are you giving it? It's got a great story, cool action, good ideas. I think they took a bit of a gamble with this concept, but it has totally paid off. I'm giving it four and a half out of five stars. Yeah, it was definitely a risk, that whole TV show thing, and some people might still find it a little bit gimmicky, but I think it works. This is great work from Remedy. I'm giving it four and a half as well.